Number 33, an AM radio transmitter broadcasts 50 kilowatts of power uniformly in all directions. Letter A, assuming all of the radio waves that strike the ground are completely absorbed and that there is no absorption by the atmosphere or other objects, what is the intensity uh, 30 kilometers uh, away? All right. So uh, basically what will, you know, and it says hint half the power will be spread over the area of the hemisphere. So pretend you have a particular source here and it is emitting, okay, is emitting a certain wave. Now, you know, as these as they travel they kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger whatever but you have to imagine now that this is like has a spherical shape to it a spherical shape I, I can't really draw but pretend that this kind of comprises now like a like a hemisphere so to speak okay like a hemisphere and uh that looks more like a parabola but the important idea here is that if i had a sphere let's say let's say here let's say here let me draw a circle all right and if I know that this, let's say here, let's rotate this around. Maybe I can do this justice. Maybe, just maybe. All right, let's dot this in the back. So here's the sphere, right? So if I were to maybe take this and let's say rotate it like this, okay? So hopefully you're kind of getting the 3D image here a little bit on the 2D screen. But what I'm trying to say is that this area now, this area, of the sphere. It's a hemisphere. So I got to calculate this whole area of that sphere. Okay. It turns out the, that the square area, okay, or the surface area of a sphere works out to be, so I'll just call it the area. The surface area is going to be equal to 4 pi r squared. It's very close. It's very close to the uh, area of a circle, but there's a 4 there. Okay. But now they're saying that that all this energy is going to be distributed basically over half of that sphere in one direction. So just take that and divide it by two. So in other words, the area that of importance is going to be two pi r squared. Okay. So if you think about this, right, if we were to kind of put this now in the middle of the star, right, from the source, what they're telling us now is that the position away uh, from that point is going to be 30 kilometers. And what's the power? Well, they told us that the power from the source is going to be 50 kilowatts, but they said that half the power will be spread over an area of a hemisphere. So in other words, over this hemisphere now, only half of the power, meaning 25 kilowatts or AKA 25,000 watts. So now what we're going to do is we can now calculate the intensity because intensity is simply the power divided by the area over which that power is being supplied. So the power over half that area is 25 thousand watts divided then by two pi times the radius and what's the radius 30 kilometers right and that works out to be 30,000 meters and you got to square it so let's then find that intensity okay so this is then going to be 25,000 divided then by parenthesis two pi times 30,000 squared and what do we get we get a value here of about now 4.42 all right, times 10 to the minus 6, and that is in terms of watts per meter squared. Those are the units of intensity. All right, so that takes care of that. And letter B then, it's going to say, what is the maximum electric field strength at this distance? So we have to relate intensity to then uh, mag uh, electric field. So we're going to be using this formula over here. And that tells us that the intensity here, it's the average intensity, is going to be equal to the speed of light multiplied by the a permittivity of free space multiplied then by the peak electric field strength squared divided by two. These are constants. And therefore, as long as you know the intensity, you can always find the electric field strength, okay? So if you want to solve it for electric field, cross multiply these items, right? We've seen this now plenty of times. And then to get rid of the square on the right, you got to square root both sides. So you square that side and you're going to get rid of that square there. And look, voila, there's the formula. Look at how beautiful that is. So now all we have to do is basically just plug this on in. So there's going to be square root of 2 times that intensity we just found, a 4.42 times 10 to the minus 6, all then divided by a speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, multiplied then by the permittivity of free space, which is about 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th, and go plug and chug. So square root of 2 times 4.42, actually let me put in that exact answer. So second square root of 2 times that exact answer, then divided by parentheses 3 times 10 to the 8 multiplied them by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12th and what do we get we get a value here of about zero well 0 0.0577 i guess and that is in now volts per meter 
all right? Or newtons per coulomb. You know, there's a whole bunch of ways you can write this uh, electric field, but volts per meter is generally the accepted uh, value, even though they, there's many ways to write it, technically. Guys, that does it. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully this video helps. And if it does, give us a hand. Subscribe, like, and even tell maybe some of your classmates, all right? And keep us in mind in the future. All right, if you're taking chemistry or mathematics, go check out our videos. We'll see you soon. Bye.